Welcome to True Stories Night. On this show, we take real stories as told on classic moments with Mo and see how they apply to life today. Tonight, we're taking a look at the growth of the Nigerian film industry, popularly referred to as Nollywood. As at a decade ago, it wasn't necessarily cool to be referred to as someone working in Nollywood, but the story seems to have changed today. Whether or not the phrase new Nollywood is cool, the past few years have seen a shift in the quality of films coming out of Nigeria and a boost in the cinema culture. Tonight, we meet a couple of the newer faces of the Nigerian film industry, but only after revisiting the veteran Nigerian filmmakers from Classic Moments with Mo, hearing their thoughts and predictions about Nollywood 10 years ago. Producers and the filmmakers also recognize the need for training, and they are okay. taking it seriously. That's good. And I think that it is important to recognize that Nigeria seems to have been able to make something out of nothing yes and yes. then what is left is consolidation yes. and i think that with a rich cultural heritage as audience mm -hmm. you know very important we don't have an industry without the audience mm -hmm. and the improvement in technology and the training and retraining of the professionals i think that we are going to have a breakthrough as okay. we go along That's i think that people should be patient with that industry and give us maybe next five to ten years And Tunde Kalani's expectations of Nollywood didn't turn out wrong after all. With Nigeria's highest grossing movie, The Wedding Party, raking in more than 450 million naira in 2016. Not too bad. <laughs> this girl, you are an angel. Hi! We should have even charged them double bright price. Oh, oh my gosh. Have fun for me, brothers. I need a new best man. <laughs> Fine, Shola, you are now the best man. Please don't make me regret this. What is wrong with you? Little wonder that the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics estimated that the arts and entertainment industry contributed about 54 billion naira to Nigeria's GDP. In the past few years, other movies have also made their mark. The 2015 romantic comedy, When Love Happens, was one of the more recent films that showed a different kind of storytelling with some success. Critically acclaimed films like Uju Kokoro, the Arbitration, 76, Green White Green, and 93 Days followed, showing that filmmakers were now willing to tell different kinds of stories, and audiences all over the world, Nigerian or not, were increasingly willing to pay money to see them. We've seen more of this with 2017 films like Isoke and Banana Island Ghost, upping Nollywood's profile all over the world. Now, after the break, another veteran filmmaker, Femi Odubemi, talks about the future of Nollywood as he saw it back then on our classic episode. Stick around. Welcome back. We're still talking about Nollywood then and Nollywood now. Let's head back to our classic episode in which veteran filmmaker Femi Odubemi talks Nollywood. It's not right to try to define it. I think it's, it's a creative combustion that's come out of um, the nature of Nigerians. The fact that we're very, very resourceful people. Nollywood has come out of the development of digital video. Uh, it's come out of the fact that the film industry was badly funded at the time that Nollywood came up. But you've got to understand that Nollywood has sustained creativity in the form of motion picture in Nigeria for at least 10 years now. Mm -hmm. Uh, but for me, the defining essence of any industry is how does it sell? Mm -hmm. And you've got to admit that Nollywood is selling. sells. Uh, mm. There are challenges, as mm. with mm. any other industry. Mm. And, uh, you know, I'd rather that we have better sound. Mm -hmm. I'd rather that we prepared a little better. Mm -hmm. I'd rather that we delivered more value to the audience in terms of you know, not what having to them. Mm. the quality. But I think if you look at how Nollywood was when it started 10 years ago, mm -hmm. and Nollywood now, mm -hmm. you have to understand there's been, progress. there's been progress. So I'm hopeful okay. that in another 10 years from now, um, we'll Nollywood we'll would, would, would be, be where it should be. Exactly. Okay. Well, we can't talk about the evolution of Nigeria's film industry without talking to those who have emerged from it. Joining me now is Zena Balogun, whose most recent films include The Wedding Party and its upcoming sequel, Sylvia, as well as Oju Kokoro, A Soldier's Story and Entreat. You've been busy. I have. 
thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for All having right. me. Yes. So I want to ask a very typical Nollywood question. Okay. What was your opinion of Nollywood before you joined the Nollywood system? Um, gosh, opinion of it. I knew that I loved it. Um, I remember coming to Nigeria for holidays and like it was one of the things we look forward to doing. So having someone go to the kiosk and buy all the seven parts of one movie and then you come home and then you realize you're missing an extra part and you don't know what's happening. Um, so it was very c communal for us. It was, you know, nice to spend time with the family together and just think about these movies. Um, and, you know, they were particular type of movies, the ones that would have a particular story to tell. So not, you know, the kind of stories that we're telling right now or how we're expanding with the stories that we're telling. But I remember it being fun and most importantly, memorable. Yeah, for good things and bad things. Hmm. Okay, so what, when you decided to come back and you knew that you wanted to go into film, were you concerned about how you would fit into what Nollywood, your picture of Nollywood was? So I told myself that I wanted to be a part of the Nollywood change, the uh, development of, um, you know, the productions, the quality, the stories that we told. So I was fortunate enough to have offers to do a, a range of different things. But, you know, working in TV as well, I had a, um, you know, a bread and butter job, which allowed me to be a little bit more picky with the kind of things that I did. So I could afford to wait for that maybe one or two movies in the year that was that I felt was going to push the industry in a different direction and that was going to open up um, global prospects. So, yeah, I, I was fortunate enough to do that. And I was um, I was happy being patient enough to do that, um, not to take away from what the previous stories and the previous movies did because they set the bar. They were the movies that people remembered all, you know, all around the world, that people watch in the Caribbean and the salons and, you know, in London. And they might poke fun at, but, you know, they, they enjoyed them. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about the new direction and much more when we come back from this quick break. So please stay with us. I'm now joined by Bibi Shashare, the director and writer of one of 2017's most highly anticipated films, Banana Island Ghost. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for joining me. So my first question is about, it's about B.I.G. It's an unconventional film, right? Did you think that you were going to make it for an audience that would readily accept it? Or did you make it because you thought it's time for the audience to see something different in Nollywood? Uh, I, I definitely think the audience was already there before we are. Um, we live in a globalized economy now. Um, you can't say enough about social media, about smartphones, about exposure. Um, whether you like it or not, the palette of the average Nigerian audience is exposed to Fast and Furious and Avengers and all that stuff. So, you know, I don't think you're... In today's world, I don't think you're going to push the boundary enough that they're not already expecting that stuff. They don't know if you can deliver it, but they're waiting for you. They, they've gone far past we. Do you think so? Do you think that they are more critical, though, of the stories that come out of Nigeria that are riskier? Yes, yes. I, I certainly think there's a, there's a precaution against this tendency to want to deliver Hollywood and huge things and, and not deliver them right. And so um, a lot of criticism I get on Banana and Ghost is, hmm, but did you guys take time to make sure? I haven't seen it yet, so it looks good. Or what, is the story going to be good? Is there going to be good acting? Is there, or is it all just, you know, wham, bam, shazam, and all that? But I think, um, I think if you, first of all, we're an A forever country which works for filmmakers like us. Um, if you, Nigerians care that you are passionate and you do something and you put in your guts and your soul into it. So if you do that, they're already going to come for you. Ah, you try now, you know, yeah, we're done. Yeah. So yeah. that's already great. Um, and then if you sort of deliver on the things you promise an audience, it's a contract you're signing with them when they sit in the cinema, you promise them that you're going to take them on a journey. And if you deliver some of those, they'll forget some of the potholes along the way and the mistakes along the way as we do in our daily lives anyway. Yeah. And if you come out on the other side with a feeling, that's all that matters. Okay, well, we're going to take another quick break. When we come back, we're going to be talking about whether or not Nollywood is a little bit elitist. So please stay with us.
Welcome back. We've been talking about Nigeria's film industry, the new sort of generation. Now, there is a new kind of filmmaker in town, and I'm happy to have one of them with me. Yes. Do you not think that's true? I uh, don't let the old guys hear you. I don't know. I don't know about a new kind of filmmaker. In a few years, we'll be old guys too. Um, but now so you're new, sort of newish because new. it's my first feature. Yes, it That's is. That's about you know as new as it's gonna get. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So I want to talk about elitism. Um, now, you, for example, you you said something just a little bit earlier about you think that the audience's palette is you know more developed. There's the fast and the fierce and things like that. But I wanted to say in our film industry, sometimes. There's criticism that the new Nollywood guys or people, crew, are aiming a little bit too high because, after all, the traditional Asaba movies, they're still, making, they're still making money and they're still churning out what they're churning out. So are the people who are making the newer kind of films thinking too much on a, a higher level, not thinking about the average Nigerian? I, again, I, I, I don't see that to be the case because um, the average Nigerian is just exposed to all these movies around the world, whether it's Z World, that India is doing stuff, and our friends who have watched Bahubali already, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's Oriental Asia, whether it's you know, Robert Rodriguez, South American stuff, they're exposed, like smartphones, social media, YouTube, all that stuff. So I don't think it's elitist to want to make the quality of production a bit better and more palatable to people, especially for exportability. Um, I think if you substitute that for the story, then you're starting to sacrifice on some things. But honestly speaking, the truth is every level of development is elitist to the previous level of development, isn't it? Because yeah. the guys who are what you would consider old, I don't know what that means. Spielberg is old as can be, but still making relevant movies. So there's guys in that generation who make really great movies. To Nick Alani, every time it comes out, makes great stuff. So um, I think these guys were making movies out of thin air. There was nothing, there was no infrastructure. There was, you know, they just took a camera and went and taught themselves before there was YouTube where you can teach yourself now. They just wrote scripts, designed a little set, you know, did, and, and they made something out of nothing. So to people who had never done it before, who do you think you are? They can just come on, you know, so every step of development in a sense has some sort the audacity of it is elitist, I think. Um, but I don't know, if, if that's what it takes, then call us elitist. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Our call today seeks to encourage everyone to support the growth of the African film industry. Let's celebrate creative talents, paint a positive picture of Africa, and keep the cinema culture alive. More and more people are supporting Nollywood's growth. Cinema culture is much better than before, with more screens and seemingly more of a willing audience than 10 years ago. Our films are attracting international audiences, traveling all over Africa and the world in festivals and on various online platforms. But growth by itself is not enough. Piracy is still a huge problem, while distribution and copyright challenges are some other issues to contend with. As the stories we tell improve, and the technology used and the quality of those involved get better, those who are passionate about Nollywood still say government will have to do a lot of the heavy lifting, with concessions, tax breaks, and better enforcement regarding piracy and other revenue bleeds, so we can enjoy these stories and they can profit from their work for a long time to come. I'm Lamidi Akintubi. Thank you for watching. True Stories Night continues. Please don't change the channel.